Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda Cawthon and I'm one of the librarians at Fugerville Public Library. Tonight, I am so excited to have author Sajni Patel with us for a virtual visit with some of our diverse team book club members. Sajni is the author of the recently released YA book, The Knockout, a story full of heart and hope about a young Muay Thai fighter. Sajni is also the author of two adult romances, The Trouble with Hating You and First Love Take Two, as well as a contributor to the YA collection inspired by the pandemic lockdown, Together Apart. So to start off tonight, I'm going to ask Sajni to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became an author. Hi, everyone. I just want to start this off with by saying thank you for having me. <laughs> this is my first time talking uh, to teens and at a library. So this is like a moment for me. <laughs> um, very excited to be here. So I grew up here in Austin. I moved to the States when I was four from India. And I actually grew up like around this area <laughs> where you guys are at. And I really wish that we had something like this when I was growing up. This is really cool. Um, I started writing when I was uh, 10 years old. In fifth grade, my short story, my first short story was about vampire bunnies. I don't know the plot <laughs> of it, but it was kind of wild. Um, I was really into horror. That was just my genre growing up. Um, Arl Stein was my, my go-to guy in middle school. In high school, I switched over to uh, Stephen, um, I was going to say Stephen Hawking, Stephen King. Although I do like Stephen Hawking as well. Um, Stephen King was just like, just it for me. And I really don't know how I got into writing um, rom-com and contemporary and things like that. Because I still kind of lean toward the darker things when I read. Um, and I when I started college, I stopped writing for for a bit um it wasn't something that was considered serious in my family so you know I was like in biology and that was my jam back in the day I was supposed to be a doctor don't tell my parents <laughs> that I'm not um and I started writing again because I felt a, a hole I felt some emptiness inside of me so I went back to writing and it's really something that brings me together it really is the glue in my life and it's an outlet as well and so um, I'm just able to get a lot of things off my chest with writing. Um, as mentioned earlier, I do write uh, adult women's fiction and rom-com. And some of the things that those books contain are some darker issues, things that, you know, we as a society still need to take care of. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to bring out those things in my books. And of course, with the knockouts, I'm able to talk a little bit about bullying and not feeling that one fits in because that's kind of how I grew up. I just didn't feel like I belonged in the Indian community. And I felt like I was okay in the American community, but obviously being brown skinned in Texas, you know that you're different. Um, so I'm just really happy to be able to bring things out. And the knockout is actually um, set in my school. So <laughs> has anyone figured out what school? I think I actually named the name of my school in the book. So po double points for anyone who can bring that up. Um, yeah, and then I also have a YA coming out next year through Abrams. It's called My Sister's Big Fat Indian Wedding, which was inspired by my brother's wedding. Um, it was an Indian wedding, just so elaborate and cinematic that I just had to put it into a story. So that's coming out next year, and I'm really excited about that. And I think that's all. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing some questions, though. So let's see. One, the first question they came up with is what, and you kind of covered this a little bit, but what is your favorite book genre? So you kind of mentioned that a little bit already with horror, but is, is that, would you say that's your favorite? Um, I would say like horror and fantasy. Definitely. I, I go with those themes, something darker. Do you prefer uh, like contemporary or do you like some of the, like historical horror kind of stuff? Um, I think contemporary or futuristic um, is my thing. Yeah, historical, I kind of have a little bit of a difficult time getting into um, the language of it. So I think that's, for me personally, that's kind of what holds me back from historical. But I do like contemporary and, and futuristic and dystopian. <laughs> that might not be in right now. I don't know what's cool right now, but <laughs> dystopian is always good for me. Uh. Let's see. And see, so yeah, Adderin says, I love dystopian. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, and horror is amazing. Yes, I can't read it too late at night, but it is. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's um, into audiobooks. I just 
started getting into audiobooks a few months ago and reading or not reading, I guess listening to horror on audiobook is the best experience. But not at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be too much. <laughs> let's see. And they've got at let's see, what is your fave what is your comfort book? Um as in my go to the book I that guess makes like you if feel you- good. Yeah, if you if you need a book, you know, just to curl up with, like, you know, a book that maybe you read over and over again, or one that you read if you just are having a bad day and you just need something to curl up with, do you have a comfort book? I don't have a comfort book. Um, I always, when I read a book that I really like, I always think I'm going to keep this, I'm going to read it again. But my reading pile is so long and vast and endless <laughs> that I never go back. I never have a chance to go back and read the book. I'm like, okay, I really should, you know, I have like 300 books on my TBR list, and I really should kind of chop that down a little bit so no i don't that's okay um let's see and let's see we've got a question from elena yeah so i thought it was really cool how you talked about like the um sports group of like all the girls where they like got together and like supported each other and i thought it was really cool that you mentioned like marching band as a sport and i was wondering if you've like always thought that or what because like that's not like a super common thing but i really thought it was very cool uh, yeah, I think so, because uh, growing up, especially like here in high school, you know, marching band and football is just a huge thing here in Austin. And so I had friends. I mean, I kind of knew a, a little bit um, in all the groups, like a lot of uh, not nerds because I was in all AP classes. Um, I knew like the, the people who were in AP classes. I knew people who were in the sports, uh, traditional sports, I guess cheerleaders i tried out for cheerleading i failed because i wasn't athletic <laughs> enough so cheerleading is definitely a sport dance team i know um i know what i knew people in the marching bands and just seeing like how they have to keep coordinated and how exhausting it is physically and the coordination that goes with having to play an instrument and knowing your steps and it's it's wild to me like i i can't understand how they do that so yeah um it was just something natural to think like yeah obviously that's a sport that's something very physical requires a lot of coordination and a lot of time so yeah that's really cool thank you yeah (laughs) thanks elena and let's see adarin has her hand up you want to go for it adarin yes um what is one of your pet peeves while riding or something about your own writing that maybe you like have a bit of trouble with wrapping your brain around? Mm, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question because um, so many parts of writing can be difficult. <clears throat> um, I do have, I guess, so I guess one of my pet peeves, the thing that I have to go back constantly and change is my use of words like, um, because obviously I say, um, <laughs> quite a bit, um, and like, and just, those are the words that I keep using over and over. And my editor is always like, you have 700 cases of this word in this manuscript. I need you to cut that down. Uh, so that is one of the things that I do have a problem with. And I think fight scenes mm, were a little bit more difficult because you're trying to create the fight scene, like trying to put the reader into the headspace of the of the character you're trying to show them visually what's going on mentally, what's going through their body, because obviously all of that is like a lot going on in the character's head, going on in any fighter's head and still having something that draws you in and out of it. So you're not like just reading a straight up fight scene. Um, that was a, a bit challenging. That's very interesting. Um, let's see, Emma just asked in the, um, chat box, did you do any sports growing up? Yeah, I did. Um, not my time because (laughs) I had a friend that I met someone in college and she invited me to see her practice. And I was like, wow, that's, that's intense. I can't do that. I'm afraid of getting hit. I did grow up in school playing uh, softball. I played softball. Um, I wasn't good at it. I played volleyball. (laughs) I wasn't good at it. Um, I also did integrated martial arts. Uh, So that was karate, taekwondo, hapkido, tai chi, and kung fu. So that was fun, but I wasn't good at it. (laughs) I was, of course, uh, just like Muay Thai, afraid of getting hit. But I tried. (laughs) 
<laughs> and Adrian said, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so uh, tying into that, uh, why did you choose my tie to write about? Um, I grew up doing the mixed martial arts. Uh, but it was mixed martial arts. Like, um, I don't know if you know much about martial arts, but each one is, has a lot of background to it. It has a cultural impact. It has a vocabulary because it stems from, um, Asian, usually Asian countries. And there's just a lot that goes into each martial arts. So I didn't want to pick one of the ones that I already did. I wanted to pick Muay Thai because it is like a bit more intense and there's a lot more fighting. Whereas in martial arts, at least the ones that I went to, you had a choice of if you wanted to spar or not. And you had a choice of going to tournaments or not, depending on on which um, on which company you went through, where you were where you were training and learning. Whereas my Thai, <coughs> excuse me, whereas my Thai is um, that's your end goal is to be in the ring and to really fight someone, even though you don't have to. I think Karina explains that in the book that you don't have to do any fights if you don't want to. Um, and again, going back to that, that woman that I met in college, she, when I met her, she was super bubbly and gorgeous and friendly. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. I'll go wherever you want me to go. <laughs> and then I saw her fight and there's a whole other side to her. And I'm just like, oh man, she's really kick butt. And how you are one thing or another, I mean, you're not really one thing or another. You're kind of a little bit of everything. And so I really remember that person that I met in college. That's very cool. Um, oh, and let's see, Emma just raised her hand. So Emma, I'm going to let you jump in here. Um, are the, to totally get off a different subject, um, but like, where did you draw influence? Like, did the char characters draw influence from people you know? Like, how did you write the characters, I guess? <clears throat> yeah, some of the characters, many of the characters are from people that I know. Um, like, some of the female athletes, that Karina is friends with, uh, they stemmed from actual girls that I went to high school with who were in sports. Cause I actually, I guess thinking about it now, I actually knew a lot of, a lot of athletes and most of them were girls and it was really cool to, to have them there. And uh, the best friend was based off of my best friend in high school. And the mom is based off of me. How I think I would be if I had a teenage daughter. Um, I, I would say Amit is not based on anyone. Um, and then, you know, the principal, yes, because people that I just, you know, I'm just rem kind of reminiscing about people that I knew in school. And it was kind of fun to just write about them and talk about them and kind of really be in that world again. Pretend I was, I'm a teenager <laughs> one more time. Um, out of curiosity, does anybody, any book club members, do you guys remember which high school it is that she mentions that Karina goes to? I believe it's a book book if, if you get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And I asked for the colony colors on the book. So as you can tell, it's it's that green and black. Oh, that's there. so cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's very awesome. Um, that's really cool. I went to actually Westview Middle School, which normally feeds into Conley. So yeah. that, a lot of people that I knew from middle school went to Conley. <laughs> that's so fun. I think that's really neat because it's it's kind of fun for local kids to get to read about a school that they know. Yeah. And I think I had like the same colors and mascot and uh, the same visual setup of the school and everything. It wasn't some... Um... My creativity didn't have to go too far. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, let's see. And Adrian's got a question. I'm curious as to what's your favorite thing about Texas? Um, I. OK, so Texas, I'm just going to say Austin. <laughs> Austin, I like the diversity. Uh, I know like not all of Texas is diverse, but, you know, most of the big cities are. Um, and since I grew up in Austin and been here for a lot of years, Austin is diverse. Um, you know, you have a lot of ethnicities here. You have a lot of immigrants here. You have a lot of culture here. You can do, it's a huge music scene. It's a huge art scene. Um, it's a huge area for medicine as well and law and engineering and, and movies. <laughs> they make a lot of movies here and food, of course, food just is great here in Austin. Um, so I, yeah, I would say like the diversity is definitely a thing that I really enjoy.
And in the chat, Adarin says, Austin is amazing and I love the art. Yes. And I, I just want to add to that, like the art, um, you have the museums, obviously, but you also have like street art. You have the sculptures that are all around. You have contemporary and this is really like a really great um, variety of, of art around here. Thank you. And Elena, you have a question? So I know like the high school she's at is obviously pretty much Connolly, but like was like the little like pond with like all the little ducklings based on anything or was that just like pure imagination? Because I thought that was a really cool scene. When they're behind the school in that creek. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that creek is still there, but when I went to Connolly, the creek, there was a creek back there. Um, sometimes. Wow. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> sometimes, okay. So sometimes we would, instead of having to walk all the way around because there was like no uh, bus or anything back in the day, we would like cut through property and cut through the creek and stuff. I guess guys did because girls were like, no, we're not doing that in the middle of the night or like five o'clock in the morning to get to school. Um, and then we also had to do a science thing where we had to take a census of what kind of animals and plants and things like that. So in our biology class, we were taken through the backwoods was what it felt like back then. I don't know how it is now. And just kind of write down what we saw. Um, I think it was part of like a scientific census of that they were taking because it used to be just wildlife there before they built the school a while back. So I'm interested to find out if the creek is still there or not. I don't know if there were ducklings there. I think there would be. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. <laughs> I wonder if we can get a Conley student. Any, if there are any Conley students watching this recording and you can tell us <laughs> there's still a creek there, comment in the chat, in the uh, comments below. Uh, let's see, uh, Mira has a question. Go ahead, Amira. Uh, yes, uh, my question would be, um, what was your favorite part about writing this book? Um, I would say just getting a lot off my chest. <laughs> it was very therapeutic. And I think I can say that about all of my stories. They're very therapeutic. I just had a lot to say about how girls are viewed when they're athletes, um, especially when something that's considered a rough sport. There are sports that are considered girly and sports that are considered kind of manly and just kind of breaking down that stereotype, but also seeing how, uh, female athletes can get bullied. Um, you know, as, as you know from Karina, she was called a lot of things. A lot of people assume things about her and it can be hurtful. So that was one of the great things that um, I enjoyed just really bringing things to a reader's mind. Like, uh, have you seen this done? Are you the one doing it? Have you been on the receiving end of it? How can you uh, kind of stand up for yourself or for someone else if you see this going on? And I hope I get readers thinking that way. Thank you. Um, so one of the questions that they had come up with uh, previously to ask is, um, who was your favorite character in your book? My favorite character? Hmm. <laughs> and every author always says they can't pick a favorite character. Oh, I can't know that. We want to know anyways. <laughs> um, gosh, there were so many fun characters. Karina was a favorite. She's kind of you know, a reflection of a lot of things. Um, and then the mom, because maybe because she was kind of based off of me <laughs> and how I wish I could have reacted in some cases. Um, but yeah, and I think Lily was a fun character as well. I, I, yeah, so I guess like those three. <sighs> Thank you. Um, Adrian, you have a question? Yes. Um, do you have a least favorite character from the book? Yeah, I would say the little bullies <laughs> in there. Um, they stem from people that I know. Uh, and so, you know, you know that saying, I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, authors always say, like, uh, be careful what you do or say to me because you might end up in my book. <laughs> and so that was kind of my way of dealing with um, a couple of people was just put them in my book. And yeah, I would have say they were my least favorite favorite character to write. I would just say that they're my least favorite character. Um, not anything negative about them. They're, they were crucial. And um, I feel like they were realistic. Like there are people out there like that and they were necessary for the, the book, the plots, the story, but I just wouldn't want them to be real 
I guess they are real, but I wouldn't want to, <laughs> to see them again. Thank you. And Emma? Uh, wh who is your least favorite character to write? Mm, I guess, oh, I don't remember his name, but the boy, <laughs> the, the little boy <laughs> who Amit had. You know, at the end, Amit was like, um, if you got something to say, you can say it to me instead of Karina. I can't remember his name. But he always had his arm around Karina. He was a little playboy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I totally forgot his name. Um, he, what was the question again? <laughs> Who was his least favorite character to write? Oh, okay, okay. So he was my least favorite character to write because um, there is a lot of thinking and uh there's a whole setup to writing a character, even though he was minor, even minor characters have, they have to have a lot of backgrounds and things about them that doesn't really show up on the page, but just for me to know so that I know why he is this way. Um, and trying to write characters that are not super problematic. Obviously he had some issues that he was not doing well um, and things that, that came out about him. He wasn't a great person. But I still have to be careful about how problematic he is so that readers don't get like the wrong idea about the story or about me or about this character in itself. So he was a little bit more difficult to write, even though he had a very small role in the book. Thank you. And Adarin? Oh, and also, oh, actually, before Adarin you go, I'm going to ask a question here from Caitlin. Um, what is your favorite book? Oh gosh, my favorite book. Uh, that's always a hard one. I would say, um, I would. I don't have a favorite book like overall that I've ever read, but I would say my current favorite book is something which I read recently, which was, um, I think, I believe it's called Mexican Gothic. It's an, an adult book, but it's kind of a horror book, which the one that I heard on audio in the middle of the night, which I don't suggest doing. And I know that, um, you know, it recently got picked up to, to become a movie. So that would be very interesting to see how that plays out. But yes, it was a very creepy book. <laughs> I've read that. That was a very excellent, but creepy book. You're right. <laughs> um, don't do it on audio book. No, actually do it on audio book. <laughs> I don't know if I could take it on audio. <laughs> Um, let's see, Adarina, go, go right ahead. Do you have any advice for anyone who want to try writing a book or try to be an author? Yeah, there is lots of things to know beforehand. So research is a big thing. You want to research what you're writing about, obviously. Um, even if it's something that's coming from personal experience, like this book came from personal experience, but there was still so much research that went into it specifically about Mai Tai and about my culture, even though it's my culture, <laughs> you think I would know everything that I need to know about it. But I did the research because I didn't want to offend anyone. Like I would never want a Mai Tai fighter to pick up this book and be like, oh, you got that totally wrong. It's so offensive or another Indian person or anything like that. Um, so research all the way. So researching what you're writing about um, in your story, making sure that things are not problematic. That's kind of a huge thing that's going on right now. And it should have been a big deal this entire time. But being problematic is you don't want the issue with that is that you don't want to get something wrong and offend someone or to come across um, a certain way with your characters um, because you are representing them. And then there's research with how to get published. You know, with your agent, you have to get an agent or actually you don't have to. You can be self-published. You might want to get an agent, which requires a lot of, of research and then researching what kind of publisher you want to be with, what kind of author you want to be. Um, there's different routes. There's so many ways that you can go as an author and what's more important to you. You want to and what your um, idea of success is, is it just getting a book out there, which is a great success is a great step, huge step, actually. Um, do you want to become a bestseller? Do you want to win awards? Do you want to be invited to library talks? <laughs> um, so just kind of knowing and researching. And as you go through it, you realize like what kind of author you want to be, where you want to concentrate on, um, if you want to make an impact and how you want to make an impact. You can make an impact by just having a million books out there. You can make an impact by having a small number of books, but really reaching people's hearts. So, and it's, a, it's very gratifying as well, um, depending on, 
you know, how you receive things. Um, Emma, uh, you have a question? Um, what was your favorite and or least favorite scene to write? Hmm. Favorite and least favorites. Gosh, I would say they're both the same because the fighting scenes, they were really like awesome to write and just writing them. I was like, Oh, I want to get back into the gym. <laughs> and I tell you this story because I actually walked into a Muay Thai um, facility when I was writing this book, because I was like really into it. And I was like, okay, I want to get back into shape. I'm going to be a Muay Thai. I want to fight somebody. <laughs> and I walked into the door, I opened the door and I walked one step in. I was like, nope, <laughs> that's not for me. <laughs> and I turned around. <laughs> it's like, you had all, there's like these 10 guys in there. They're like no women in there. It's 10 guys and all sweaty and just like stop in the middle of what they're doing. They're grappling, right? They just stop in the middle of what they're doing. They just look at you like, okay, this is intimidating. I can't do this. I'm not Karina. I'm not Karina. Um, it was fun to write the fight scenes to, you know, really be in that moment in that headspace. But it was also difficult, very difficult to write because, as I mentioned before, you're trying to convey so many things at once. Whereas other scenes um, can be a little bit uh, less complex. They can be simple and easier to convey and really as a reader get into them so trying to write a fight scene that's interesting and believable and realistic and still hold a reader's um, attention all the way through that was challenging um let's see we've got a question here from caitlin um how do you deal oh. with the writer's block oh my gosh writer's block wow um writer's block is a East. It can take on various forms. And I think the best way for myself that I've dealt with writer's block is just disconnecting from the book, um, forgetting about the pressure. Because sometimes I'll write a book that's under contract, which means deadlines. And oh, that's another thing if you want to write a book is, yeah, there's lots of deadlines involved. Uh, forgetting about deadlines, forgetting about if it's under contract, forgetting about any pressure associated with the book forgetting about just everything, disconnecting from it, going on a walk, forgetting about it for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, depending on how much time you need. And just realizing that you need time. So just take that time so that you, when you come back, you're really in that headspace again. And uh, watching movies, reading books like, oh, this is a bestseller or people are really raving about this or this is a really popular book. Let me pick it up and see what she's doing right or what he's doing right. <laughs> and that really gets um, the creative flow going because you're like, okay, I can write this or I have the creativity. It's coming, it's starting to come back because I'm reading someone else's creativity. Um, watching TV or movies also helps not just to relax and get my mind off of things, but also I tend to analyze the plot because so many times my agent has said, this isn't realistic or you can't write about this. So I'm like, but it's in that movie. <laughs> Why can the movie people do it and the TV shows do it? It's not, it's a whole different world when it's a book. So, you know, breaking down plot lines and character arcs and things like that. And so, yeah, just getting the pressure off by doing other things. Thank you. Um, let's see. I have a question just that I'm curious about <laughs> one of your questions. Um, what would you say was the the biggest change or the biggest difference between writing books for an adult audience versus a teen or YA audience? Um, the voice is a big thing. Switching back and forth between an, an a quote unquote adult voice, I guess. The characters have to be a little bit more mature and they have a lot of other things added to their life. Um, and I think my biggest thing is just the voice because there is a differentiation. I can't really explain it. Um, half the time I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm writing an adult book and it's, someone tells me this sounds YA. Or I'm writing a YA book and they're like, this sounds adult. And I don't really understand what you're talking about. But that's one of the hardest things for me. And the other thing is subject matter and how characters react to things. I think in my adult writing, there's um, not really as many limitations. There's, not, there's no limitations. My characters can do whatever they want. They can say whatever they want. I'm a bit conservative when it comes to writing 
my scenes and my characters. So I, you know, you're never going to find a book of mine that has like a bunch of curse words or, or a lot of graphic anything. Um, and so they're, they can be similar. I know people who read the adult works will also read the YA works. I, I can't recommend one or the other right now <laughs> to, to you guys, but um, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing is just the voice and the subject matter and how characters react to things. And I think in YA, and I know this isn't necessary because this isn't always real life, but my YA tends to be a little bit more um, innocent. There's less volatile things going on. And I know there's a lot of YA books out there that, that do approach those subject matters. Thank you. Um, Emma, go ahead. Um, this is completely unrelated. But we talked about how your website has the um, your playlist for your book. Do you oh, have yeah. Do you have a favorite song on that playlist? And like, how did you create that for the knockout playlist? Oh my gosh, I have to look it up. I don't remember what it is. It's probably um, it's probably BTS. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love BTS. <laughs> I think was it Dynamite? Dynamite. Mic drop. That's the one. Mic drop. Okay. Because I love the rap sequence in there, and I don't know how these guys do it. I don't know if you've seen the video either. <laughs> but I'm like, how, how is this the same band? But I love BTS, and I love Jonas Brothers. I wasn't into Jonas Brothers before, but I'm into them now. And so, my, I, uh, yeah, mic drop, yeah. And that's why that's the first one on there. Now I remember, now I remember my playlist. And playlists are so fun to put it out there i just like i want readers to know like this is the songs and the music and the feels that i'm feeling when i wrote this book yeah my drop <laughs> i think those are really fun to see i love when authors put those out so did you actually listen to is that like music that you actually listen to while writing or do you need silence while you write um it depends on what phase of writing i'm in if i'm writing the drafts i can listen to music um, the TV is always on, just kind of background noise. If I'm editing and having to revise, I need a bit more concentration. So there might be, the, t the TV might be on, but it's on mute or very, very low. Um, and when I'm doing copy edits, which is like the very fine prints and like grammar stuff or past pages, which is what I'm coming up with um, in a couple of weeks with one of my books. It's like the last read through you have before it goes to the printer. Very, very fine uh, details, very, very focused on it. In that case, I need like absolute silence. I don't, I don't want anyone near me. <laughs> My little dogs can <laughs> be in the corner. <laughs> um, yeah, so it definitely depends. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go through our questions and see which ones you guys haven't asked yet. Um, let's see. Oh, how? So, how did you know that you? wanted to become an author because you said that in college you were supposed to be on track to be a doctor so what did make that shift for you i felt that so i've always been creative um, i started writing and drawing and all that stuff when i was um, in fifth grade and i when i started college i kind of just dropped out of writing for a while and i just felt like you know there's joy lacking there's something not there it's like a puzzle piece is missing in my life. And so when I returned to writing, I was like, okay, this was it. This is why I was missing um, kind of a piece of me. And so I just started to write more often. And I realized one day like, oh, maybe I should try to have a book published because that would be really cool. And then just doing the research. And it took me a long time. It took me a long time to find my agents. Um, and then with that, it took a little bit longer to find um, publishers. So it was a long process, but it was that, that period definitely of not having writing in my life and then having it back into my life. Um, let's see. Caitlin asked in the chat, how long did it take to write the knockout? The knockout took me about one to two months, I think like six weeks. And um, and the knockout in the very beginning, there's like a letter to the reader. I was going through depression. Um, and it stemmed from those girls that's in the book. Now. <laughs> they had something going on and I went through depression and I didn't think I could write again 10 months and not even put together a couple words. And I'm usually very prolific. Like I just wrote a book and 
30 days not too long ago. You know, uh, it was like, what's 400 pages if, if you have it in a book form. And so I'm very prolific. I, I always have like three or four, five projects going on at the same time. And um, I couldn't put together anything for the life of me. And then the knockout was kind of like this little idea that was in the back of my head for about a year. I tried really hard to like break through my depression and get written. And finally it did. And so when it came, it was just like a flow of words and it just happens in about six weeks. And the knockout was actually the book that got me my agent. So a lot of great things came from the knockouts. That's very cool. So when you, when, um, so did you got, get your agent after you had your adult books published then? No, my age, I, so, okay. So I wrote the knockout. Okay. So my adult book, uh, the first one that came out is called the trouble with hating you. I wrote that a long time ago. No one wanted it because it was too Brown. <laughs> I know people just can't relate to Brown characters. Um, that was like this whole thing that was going on. And of course things are changing and, and are continuing to change. So that one, I just put that away. Um, and then I wrote the knockouts and I got my agents and we were on submission to editors with the knockout and an editor came up a few months after I signed with my agent and she said that she had, um, she had my book, she had the trouble with hating you. And so she wanted, she was interested in buying it. And so my agent was like, yeah, let's, let's see what happens with the book. Let's just take it out. And I thought, surely this book is dead. No one wants it. And it sold in two weeks, which is really fast in publishing. Uh, Cause sometimes it takes like a year or a year and a half to sell a book to a publisher. Um, and so the trouble with hating you received an offer uh, about two weeks before the knockout, even though the knockout was on submission longer. And so because of that timing of, of who bought which book first, that's why the trouble with hating you was published um, in May of last year. And the knockouts had to be published a little bit later. And then of, co of course, um, uh, COVID hit and it kind of, you know, put the brakes on everything, including publishing. And so the knockout was actually supposed to come out last August and they pushed it back to this past January. Um, how did you get involved in the anthology Together Apart? Um, how, how did you get part of that? That was a really cool collection. Um, I did to read that one. I don't know if I've told anyone this publicly, so I guess now you guys are the first to know. <laughs> and then whoever watches this video, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I was on submission for my sister's big fat Indian wedding. And one of the editors was interested in, in, in buying it. Um, I ended up going with a different editor and a different publisher, but that editor who is a huge editor, if I say like the books that she has edited, you guys are probably like screaming like, Oh my God, because everyone knows those books and they're like movies and everything. And why? Um, and so anyway, so she came back to me. Oh, to my agents. Um, she really enjoyed my writing. And she said that she was putting together um, this anthology of short stories about finding love and um, positive things like feel goods because we we're going. This was like the beginning of COVID and people were just losing their minds and didn't know what to do and just going through a lot of hard things. And so this was just something to kind of get people's minds off of COVID for a little while, even though it's about um, quarantine. So she approached my agent and asked if I would be interested. In in writing a short story. And of course I was thrilled. So I was like, yes, of course. And, um, but you're asking me to write a short story that's like 10 pages long, <laughs> or I guess 20 pages in the book form. And I'm used to writing like 400 page books. So it, that was a challenge writing a short story. Cause you still have to have your plot and your arc and your character development and all that fun stuff. Um, but in very, very condensed amount of pages. And so, um, together apart, which is the anthology, it, started it was formulated um i think in may or june and it was published in october which is really really fast and so it was, it was a it was a good experience yeah i was surprised at how early on in the pandemic that that was able to be published and everything because it's um it seems like the you know in my head that it must take a really long time to get a book out and released so it, it did seem impressive how quickly that came together it, it usually does take a while. I would say um, on average between book deal to publication is about a year to two years out. And so this one from idea to publication was five months. 
And so that's including, um, you know, myself and eight other authors writing all these stories, plus getting it editing in there and um, an illustrator in prints and distribution and marketing and all that, all that kind of stuff. Like there's a reason why books take so long to come out um, in addition to a schedule and the schedule of other books. So it was a surprise for, for us, like, wow, it can be done that quickly. Why aren't things always that quick? <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see. And we have a couple of questions here that are unrelated to the book or, well, they're kind of related because these were things that were talked about in the book. Um, but so what is your favorite food? Cause there was a lot of, um, food mentioned in the book. <laughs> what is your favorite food? I have to say tacos. <laughs> I love tacos. I'm always in the hunt for a good taco food truck or something. Um, and I like, you know, Tex-Mex tacos and American tacos, but I like, you know, the real tacos, like what we consider street tacos, um and there's also this um there's this food truck in somewhere in austin and it's like a fusion of indian um indian and mexican so it's like indian flavors but in taco form and i've also um i've heard of like korean taco fusion which again is like the flavors but taco form and just um yeah i love food <laughs> i'm probably always hungry when i'm writing which is why there's always food in my books um Edwin says it uh, <laughs> sounds so good <laughs> um it does do you have a recommendation of any particular place that you would recommend for going for some good tacos oh my gosh you know I'm always on the hunt for good tacos um I don't know in this area like I've driven as far as South Austin like way way out there to get tacos <laughs> Yeah, I'm still always on the hunts for a good taco. Actually, if you guys have recommendations for me. <laughs> if you guys have anything, type it there into the chat box. So yeah. Down. Oh, someone does. Oh, Adarin <laughs> does. <laughs> Get it for you. Okay, well, Adarin is doing that. Gonna, <laughs> my next question. Um, so in the book, Karina goes to a uh, um, Holly celebration. What is your favorite way to celebrate? Um, I actually don't celebrate holy. I've actually never been to one. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always heard about them, but I'm like, oh, I don't, I, I'm not a very celebratory type person. I don't like crowds and a lot of loud music and things going on. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I never did holy. I want to hear seen pictures <laughs> and videos, but I will tell you if you're interested in it, um, Obviously not right now with the pandemic still going on, but UT has it at their campus. Um, there's like a a group, I don't know who they are, but yeah, they put it on, they put it on at UT. Um, and then there's a lot of other areas around the, um, around Austin because Austin is so big that will host Holy and Holy just came. I think it was like two weeks ago. Yeah, I'll miss it next year. <laughs> I think it's still going. Yes. I know everything is on pause for a little bit and, and it's like next year. <laughs> Fingers crossed everything will be closer to normal next year. <laughs> um, let's see. I feel like there's a couple questions that we haven't covered yet. Oh, is there are there any authors that you kind of aspire to be like or to write like? Oh my gosh, so many. <laughs> and there, some of them I do know. Um, and it's just like, wow, I, I, I get to speak with them and chat with them and hang out with them and, and figure out like their writing style or we'll talk about their writing. And it's like, wow, how do you do all this and still, you know, still such a success? Um, I know Leigh Bardugo, Bardugo. Sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. You know, she's on Netflix now. <laughs> um, I met her back when Shadow and Bone first came out and when she was on tour. And it was like, I, at that moment, I knew she was going to be huge because I was like, I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, this is going to be big. I'm just going to take my picture with you now. <laughs> um, she has, I know a lot of things going on. Um, it isn't always perfect on the, surf, and on the surface. It might look great. Um, she recently posted on Instagram talking about her um, struggle with depression before Shadow and Bone was written. And... It's a scene in knowing authors who have gone through a lot of things and still coming out um, in versions of success. To me, it seems like success because they're at further places in the world than I am. 
So just being at their level <laughs> where everyone is just like waiting for their book to come out and it's always um, a big deal and a, a huge success as, like, as far as making the, the New York Times list or USA bestselling list or getting a Netflix deal or things like that. And then just being able to write so well, I, I feel like I still have a long way to go with my writing and it's a constant process. And I think most authors will say the same thing. They're always learning and always learning how to write better and and hone it in on their craft and really structuring things for themselves better and for their stories. Um, and just, yeah, those kind of authors. Marissa Meyer is another one too. Yeah. Yeah. Her books are excellent. Um, so y'all, if you have any last questions, we're getting to the home stretch here. So if you have any last questions, make sure to toss them in the chat or raise your hand. There we go. Emma, just raise your hand. Go um, for it. Do you have any plans for a sequel for the knockout or is it just like a one standalone type deal? Right now it's a one book thing. I have thought about ideas, but I haven't, nothing's really sparked that that's, you know, creative flow. Like I don't, the story sounds kind of weak. I don't know if this is going to make it to 400 pages. Um, yeah, but I, I wouldn't discount it. Right now, there's nothing in the works, but I would be interested in trying to do something. It's just really hard to think of anything. So if anyone has ideas or what they would like to see happen, drop it in the comments. <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> Tac Taqueria Del Primo. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> Um, ooh, Adarin says that that is really good goes there, Tecania del Primo. Um, and let's see, Amira has her hand up. So Amira, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering if there's like uh, any like ideas for like books that you kind of like always wanted to do, but didn't like think it would make a good book. Like what would be like your dream book to write? Like if there was like no other like... Uh, circumstances kind of around it um, I don't know because I do try to write all the ideas that I have um they don't always get finished but I I would say like a fantasy like a fantasy in space or I guess a sci-fi I guess that's considered science fiction um science fiction and I know that's really hard to pull off it's really hard to write well and maybe I'm not at that level yet where I can, at least in that genre. Um, so sci-fi is definitely something. And like creepy horror sci-fi, <laughs> the kind that I wanted to tell you to listen on audiobooks, <laughs> but not at night. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Um, okay, y'all, do you have anything else? I think we've gone through everything that y'all had come up with on your previous list. Let me go through it real quick. Um, while I'm looking for that, Emma has another question. Um, so my favorite character personally was Mitt. Um, what was your inspiration for him? And like, how did you write him? And yeah. Mm, I mean, this came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I have to write a boy. Um, let me see what kind of boy he will turn out to be. So it was a journey. And... I was just kind of interested to see how he would turn out. I, I didn't really know anything about him when I first started. I just know that he was going to be perceived as this perfect kid because of his, um, of his standing in the community and that there was going to be that bit of clashing with Karina because Karina obviously doesn't feel like she belongs. So that's all I knew about him when I started and just kind of developing him as the story progressed, like how I wanted him or how he could respond but no, I didn't really plan on much for him. So I'm glad that readers liked him because he came out pretty decent. <laughs> As from our last book club, he was very popular. Last book club meeting. Um, uh, one question I had is how has COVID affected your writing process or even like the book promotion? Because I know, you know, normally there's a lot of, you know, there's, visits you know like author visits and stuff that happen surrounding new books and i imagine that's all been affected by covid yeah i had a lot of events um canceled like last year 
when COVID first hit, I was supposed to go to the library association to, you know, sign books, like a bunch of arcs that were going to get sent to Houston. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's going to be celebrities there as keynote speakers. Um, the guy from the office, I can't ever think of his name. <laughs> what is his name? Anyway. Um, Nick, Nick Offerman from yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was brokenhearted about missing that. <laughs> oh, were you supposed to be there? Yeah, I was so yeah, I was supposed to get my own little booth and everything. I was super excited to just sign books. Um, yeah, and, and that as an author, especially your first book, that's kind of like it's a momentous occasion. It's a big milestone. So that was disappointing, but it's understandable. And because of COVID, like there's much worse things happening that were happening and aren't happening. So it's like, okay, in the bigger picture, my little book signing is nothing. L L L A L A or um the Texas Library Association things ha getting canceled, that's not a big deal, whatever people are, are suffering. So I I thought I, I saw it that way. Um, it was a little disappointing, but not that big of a deal. Um, I had book launches canceled, of course. The knockout was, the release for it was pushed back several months. Um, a lot of marketing kind of fell through. Um, and people were just in the, they just weren't in a place where they could buy books because people were losing their jobs and, or they weren't in a place where they could concentrate on reading because of all the horrible things happening. So that was a thing that was going on during, um, you know, last year and a, a bit this year too. Uh, we hope that things open up because I would like to do an in-person events <laughs> someday. <laughs> I don't know when, um, I don't know if it's going to actually happen this year or not. And as far as writing, I write full time. So it wasn't too much of a difference for me, um, except for those depressing times because someone passed away or someone was really sick or some, you know, things like that personally happened uh, to me and just getting over that. And actually the short story in Together Apart was something that drew me out of a bit of that depression because like we had several people who passed away from COVID in the beginning stages and, you know, a few more throughout. So writing that short story was just a way to get out of that, um, that depression for a little bit. And writing is just an outlet. It's a creative outlet. So if you guys have something that, that you use as an outlet for anything for, for stress or getting something off your chest or just to relax or unwind or to find your happiness, definitely keep doing that and make sure you make time for that. I know even as teenagers, you guys are super busy and swamped with things and stressed out like AP tests <laughs> and star didn't star happen recently. Or did they cancel that? I don't know. Sounds stressful. Yeah, it's still going on. Kind of no. rough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to give just a second in case anybody has a last question, but I think we are just about here out of time. Questions now? Okay, well, Sajit, thank you so much for doing this visit with us. I'm so excited that we got the chance to meet you virtually. And I really hope that at some point we can all meet you in person <laughs> at the library for an event. Uh, Joanne in the chat says, thank you so much for coming. Allison says, thank you so much. Uh, thank Mira you. says, thank you. Caitlin says, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. This was awesome. And again, this was a milestone for me. So it was, it's a special moment. <laughs> Special day. <laughs> well, it's great to have you. And I uh, will have this recording up on YouTube soon within a week. And uh, we'll have it in segments coming up on Instagram also. So thank you guys. I'm going to let you guys hop out of the meeting. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you all next month.